So you've beaten the game, you've seen the end credits. If you haven't seen the end credits yet, why are you watching this video? Because this video might contain spoilers about what's coming up next for Endgame in Pokemon Scarlet and Violet. So if you've beaten the game, you should know that there are a variety of activities you can do once you finish the game and you're like, okay, cool, what now? You know, I've, I've beat all the gyms, I've, I've beat the special trainers and people from space and time and time machines and shit, and now you are free to roam the world. The first thing you can do is battle all eight gyms again. You will see there is an exclamation mark above all of them. The game will tell you, go battle all the gyms again. They're not too hard, honestly. I think most of them will level 65 to 67. I honestly didn't even change my Pokemon. I made one competitive Dracapult level 100, and I sweeped every single gym with that one Pokemon. So it was it was entirely easy. There was no reason to like struggle there. You are able to also go rematch your legendary Pokemon in area zero. It's right at the very bottom. There's like a little area where it kind of like leads up to it. You'll see Coridon or Miraidon just chilling there and you'll be like, whoa, what's this? And when you rebattle them, this time you can use the Pokemon in your party. And this time you're able to catch this one. So you can have this one as a secondary one to the one that you have in your party that you ride on. Now you can use this to either trade with people from the opposite game. Like I could trade this Coridon to get a Miraidon from somebody else, or I can keep this and have two Coridons on my team. Just one that's, you know, usable to ride and the other one that's like a free normal Pokemon that sits in your bags the whole time. You will be able to use your Master Ball on this if you wish. If you choose not to, I do recommend getting it into the red health and then apply a status effect and try catch it because I threw like 30 Pokeballs of various kinds, Dusk, Ultra, just, it, dude, I I just had to throw the Master Ball because I was getting tired. So I was like, I gave up my Master Ball to just get that legendary in the ball. Apart from catching your legendary, another thing that you might not have done is if you haven't already done your classes at the academy, go do your classes. You'll see your teachers also have side quests and at the end of their side quests and you've built up the relationships with them, they'll each require you to do specific things. Like one will be like, oh cool, you gotta get sweep, sweet Herba Mystica from, you know, Terra Raid Battles, from a five star Terra Raid Battle and then take it back to him so that he can like, you know, finish his thing there. And they usually give you Terra Shards, like 50 Terra Shards. I know I got Rock. I got I got 50 rock terra shards and I got 50 dragon terra shards. The rest of them give you different types of rewards. I think one gives you a Pokemon, other one gives you like these other items. I don't even recall. But yeah, there are some items that you can use, especially those like terra shards because they seem hard to get. Now, once you've beat all eight gyms again for the second time, this will unlock the Ace Tournament. Think of this as a replacement for the Battle Tower because you can do the Ace Tournament. It gives you like a bunch of random opponents, you know, picking from everybody who you've battled before. And when you beat everybody in succession, I think it was like four trainers. I think there's four people you have to battle if I if I counted correctly. And once you beat the ace tournament for the first time, it becomes a regular thing where you can go do it whenever you want. Like you can just, you can rock up now and be like, okay, cool, I want to do it again and again and again. And you can do this either for money. It's mainly for money, to be honest, I think, if you, if you want some money, but it's not the best way to get money in the game. But if you do the ace tournament for the first time, it will unlock six star raid battles to spawn around your world. These are the black crystal raids and these are very, very difficult. I think they have Pokemon around like level 90 in them and they hit really hard. They are also guaranteed to have a guaranteed five best IVs. So if you're looking for competitive Pokemon, these black crystal raid ones are gonna be basically set. All you have to do is EV train them, get the right nature, and you are sorted. You also have to beat the terror raid though. So, so that's something you can go ahead and struggle with and go compete with on online. Alternatively, if you're looking for more of a casual, you know, end game, you can go ahead and complete your Pokédex if you haven't already. Go collect all 400 Pokémon, I believe it is, and go finish the Pokédex and get your shiny charm and, you know, start shiny hunting Pokémon, which is another thing you can do, is hunt for shiny Pokémon that you like. Get those shinies, either breeding, catching them from those outbreaks that you see around the world, or just finding them randomly and getting super lucky. Now, if you haven't already done this, there are four shrines that are around the world. In fact, one of the teacher's side quests is actually to do, I think, one of these shrines. 
and you gotta go find these like glowing stakes, like you know, like put into the ground. There's four shrines, each of them have eight stakes that you gotta collect. I'm gonna be making guide videos on this quite soon on how to do them, so stay tuned if you haven't done them. Now you are able to do this before endgame, but if you left it to the end like I did, I'm only gonna go get it now. And these have unique Pokemon in within them, these like Chinese kind of formed Pokemon, which are pretty cool. Some of them look really awesome. Alternatively, as with all Pokemon games, you're probably gonna be playing long-term so that you can make competitive Pokemon for online battles before the ranked seasons open up so you can go play ranked Pokemon and, and beat other people online, maybe attain tournaments in your local cities. I know South Africa here has has some local tournaments that they'll probably be doing once, you know, like ranked is out and, and people have had enough time to, you know, like, you know, really make their competitive Pokemon. So probably by early next year, local events and, and online competitive events will become a thing that you can start competing in and making your best Pokemon to do so. So yeah, those are all different ways I can think of for you to experience the game in Endgame after becoming champion in Pokemon Scarlet and Violet. If you think I left something out or you feel like there's another thing that's more fun to do within the game that I completely forgot about, let me know in the comments down below and I hope you guys enjoyed. Thank you so much for watching.